Hello everyone. So many of you guys will have a home lab setup, and if you don't, well, I think you need one. So if you're in IT or you want to be in IT, or you're going to need a place to test and play with all the fun software and the learning for how you want to work with it. So for some people, in fact, most people who are wanting to poke around with things and play with stuff in IT, especially Linux things, uh, one of these are great for that. And by one of these, I mean one of these little Raspberry Pis. Now, this is probably going to be enough power to keep you going for a while, but eventually you're going to run out of steam with that and you're going to want to kind of find something a bit better. Now, you could go and buy yourself some used kit on eBay. So you could go and get like a 1U rack mount server or a U1 rack mount server. But just make sure you've got somewhere nice and soundproof for those things because they are really, really, really super loud. Um, maybe a midpoint um, today is now a NAS. Uh, the NASs today have, got, have evolved quite a bit. We've got quite big processors and quite a lot of power inside them. And these things can actually run like really fast networking, 10 gig networking on there as well. Uh, and can run things like Docker containers and VMs. So today, what we're going to go and do is play with one of the newest NASs on the market, which is a Ugreen 4800 plus. So let's make this a project. What I need to do with a project to, to learn something is set some simple goals and work towards those goals, okay? Uh, and this is normally how I kind of approach learning new things. If I know something is possible, I can figure out how to actually get there. Um, if I know it's possible, I know I can get there, so I just need to figure out a pathway to it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to unbox the new new green 4800 plus and we're going to set up with a virtual machine and a container. And the two goals I'm going to work towards today is I need to get this un well three goals I guess unboxed and hard drives loaded uh, connected to it so I can actually create on the NAS a virtual machine. Uh, we're going to install Ubuntu on that virtual machine and we're going to see if we can SSH to it. Then we're going to actually go and throw a Docker container onto this NAS as well. And we'll just run something basic like a WordPress blog to test it and set this up. Now, I don't know how to do this yet. Uh, so this is going to be a new experience for me too. There's probably going to be some breaking and fixing along the way. But remember, if you're breaking it and then you're fixing it, what you're actually really doing is learning. So let's get straight into this and let's go and do the unboxing first. You can skip that if you want to move straight on to the screen recording section of this video where we're looking at actually setting it up. Um, but yeah, let's go and stick around and let's get into setting up our Ugreen 4800 Plus with a virtual machine and a container. One lift handle. Oh, it's a bit heavier than it seems. Let's try and pull this. One Ugreen NAS Sync Network Attached Storage. Thank you, Ugreen. Let's, uh, do a few more cuts here. Oh, okay, so the handle's not attached to anything. Bit of cut. Another handle. Another handle and another box. We have a NASSYNC DXP4800 Plus or NASSYNC DXP48000 Plus. Hey, no more handles. Right. Okay. Get rid of that. Ooh, we have a box of accessories. One side, what do we get in an accessories box? A manual and warranty card, great. An ethernet cable and screwdriver, screws. What, screwdriver and screws or screwdriver bracket screws? Might be a mistranslation there. And a power adapter. Oh no, we do actually get a screwdriver. It's a tiny little screwdriver. What else do we get? Got some power cables. Uh, oh, we've even got a Cat 6 cable. No, Cat 7 cat. Fair play, you agree? One Cat 7 cable. Uh, another Cat 7 cable. Wonderful. Uh, two little pokey things. Not entirely sure what they are. Uh, chunky, chunky PSU. Much appreciated. Proper UK standard power adapter, the best power adapter that there is. I'm going to hear nothing of it. This is the world's best power adapter or world's best power uh, connection socket thing. Right. I appreciate the little tiny screwdriver as well in the box. Oh, and this has actually got the screws in it. It will be 
very careful with that then and we'll crack on with unboxing the big boy all right so let's unbox the bigger thing down here so what do we get oh come on okay good good, good. more boxes one magnetic dust mesh filter magnetic dust mesh filter okay does that just oh it does that's that's quite a neat idea that's literally just magnetic <laughs> hdmi tv usb 3.2 two, two usb 2s two two point no hang on one 2.5 gigabit lan and one 10 gigabit lan very nice Reset button always good and 19 volts of DC. We'll do it on the front, we've got our four bays. We've got an SD card slot, a USB C slot, and a USB 3.2 slot. I'm assuming these are for ingestion, and we've got our four. Ah, ha, that's what these are for. That's what these things are for. So these things are going to be popping at the drive bays. Let's get one of these open. Okay, cool. So these things are going to be popping out the drive base. So let's go and unlock. Oh, that's locked. Oh, they're unlocked by default. Okay, that's fine. So push and pull and excellent. Nice drive bay there. Yep, with our SATA interface inside. Wonderful. So there's four drive bays total. I'm still not entirely sure what this is for. But this might be for the NVMe slots. Because one of the cool things you can do with this NAS is not only have standard spinning splatter drives of different sizes if I just unzip this thing on the bottom very quickly we should have there we go space for some extra RAM and And for two of our M.2 NVMe Gen 4 by 4 drives. Okay, so we've got some RAM already pre-installed in here. Let's see what we've got by default. So you got me some Samsung DDR5 sodiums, 8 gig of PC5 5600. So even Samsung RAM as well, so neat. A nice uh, touch there from Ugreen to use some decent manufacturers for the RAM that's included by default. And we could quite happily upgrade that. In fact, I might get around to upgrading that later on. All good. Okay, so I'm assuming these were spaces for those M.2 drives once they're in there. To get them pressed against the top. So we can kind of use the case as a heatsink. So that is standard NAS, TXP 4800 Plus. Right, that's the unboxing done. Let's go and throw some drives in here and play with it and see what we can do with it, okay? Right, so to get you in here, I'm going to need to pop this out. Okay, so I need to screw these into here after taking a little dot out. And hey, at least they uh, actually give you the screwdriver, the correct screwdriver for the screws, which is nice, so I don't have to go hunting for a screwdriver. Right, so these are two 240 gig drives. It's not much. I should be really be using multi terabyte drives with this, but I haven't got any at the moment. So it'd be good to test stuff. And plus, they'll be quite quick. They'll be faster than spinning platter. So they'll be good for what we're going to do with them. And we're going to try and do virtual machines. And we're going to try and do Docker containers on this thing. Um, so yeah, this isn't going to be just a media hub or a media server, which most people would use this for, I guess. These would be very good as a Plex server, as an MB server, something along those lines, you know, for your perf perfectly legitimately downloaded and paid for movies and TV shows. Right, so that's the next one in. Good, it's two drives. Been st that wasn't too hard. Um, I guess we should just plug it in and boot it up and try and find out what the software is like, see if we can get it to work. Okay, so we're in, we're connected. Got this underneath uh, my little drawer here, uh, and it's connected to my Deco. Now, I do have a 10 gig LAN port on the back there, and this Deco is only supporting 2.5, but should be fine for the needs of what we're going to do. All right, let's power it on. 
I can feel the fans coming off the front. That's quite quiet, and we've got some flashy lights along the front. Okay, so, I guess that just means it's booting. Let's go, oh, fans have gone off. Oh, okay, so those fans aren't on permanently, that's probably quite good. And if you notice, it's got a little NVIDIA shield wearing as a hat. That's what I use for a lot of my uh, streaming on my TV. Right, I guess let's go over to the computer, read the manual, and figure out how to use this thing. All right, so this is plugged into my network, and it seems all I had to do is go to find.ugreen.nas, and it's picked up this new new green NAS just sitting on the network, ready to be configured. Um, it wants a couple of things to do in the setup here. We've got to read some license agreements, which I obviously read in detail before clicking next, uh, and set up a default. Okay, so system updates, yeah, usual stuff, only important updates. Okay, that seems fine for the moment. We might switch that to automatically install later on. We'll see how that process actually works. Let's initialize that. And this just goes into a, a basic setup process. I fast forwarded this bit, but it took a couple of minutes to go through, no more than about five minutes, to actually complete the initial setup. And it kicked me straight in here. So this is Ugreen's admin portal. It's pretty dynamic and, to be honest, very responsive as well. So it booted me into this click around, show me where everything is interface. Uh, pretty standard. And it threw me into creating volumes because yes, that's the first thing I need to do here. I put those two SSDs in. Let's go and see if they've actually detected those two SSDs on the on the storage pane. I mean, there they are. They've got two SSDs ready to rock. So I guess I can set these up in different ways. You could do a JBOD, a RAID 0, a RAID 1, because I've got two. Uh, since I'm not too bothered about the data on here and I just want some speed, we'll go for RAID 0. Remember, if you do use RAID 0, if one of your hard drives fails, you're going to lose all your data, but you're going to go as fast as possible. So yeah, we're just going to format all of those and create it. So I mean, that was pretty easy. Um, it's telling me that it's going to lose all the data, but yeah, and give me a password validation just so I don't do this by accident. That's a nice little touch. Um, yeah, let's see how long that takes. Okay, that took all of about a few seconds to actually create that initial volume. Um, oh, there's some nice little widgets up here on the top too. I can see my CPU and my RAM overview. I can see a nice little fly out here. It's a pretty cool interface actually, I like it. Uh, there's a task center, so I can see all the processes that are running in a notification center. Almost feels a bit cloudy. I mean, the notification center bell icon is the same in, in Azure. Um, thankfully, this little thing down here is just giving me a couple of prompts for what I want to set up. It's not an annoying little AI chatbot agent thing. It does seem to disappear after a while as well. So over here in the App Center, I can install a bunch of different utilities, but we're going to get started with these virtual machines, because our objective is to get Ubuntu installed. So I can drop this straight onto volume one, and the installation's pretty quick. All right, so once that's installed, it's just a case of launch it, hit new virtual machine and create a new virtual machine, I guess. I mean, we can import virtual machines here. Just IMGs, VMDKs, VDIs, or imports from OVA files. That's quite nice. Um, but our create manually requires us to upload an image. So I'm going to go off and get an ISO image for this. Uh, I'm going to go grab the Ubuntu ISO. And we're going to do that by actually using Firefox on the NAS itself. So I'm just going to install Firefox here. Uh, and once that's installed, we'll go to Ubuntu site and actually download the ISO in a browser inside the browser interface of the NAS, which I think is quite cool. Okay, I've skipped ahead a little bit here and I've downloaded that Ubuntu ISO file. I'm now going to load it into a new virtual machine. And we're just going to call this image Ubuntu um, and get ready to use that. Okay, so new virtual machine. I'm going to stick it on this volume one. And the settings seem pretty straightforward. System image type, CPU cores, memory, nothing particularly fancy. Nothing that I do, don't actually need here. Um, so yeah, I'll set the disk at 20 gig, that's fine. And we'll have that as a bridged network. 
that's it really let's start the ubuntu server the iso is loaded so if we connect to it they've done something interesting here it's just a vnc connection so i can now just install my ubuntu server let's fast forward through this a little bit to get the ubuntu server up and running so that's it the ubuntu server's up and running i've got this lovely simple interface here i'm wholly impressed by what you green have actually done here with their virtualization system that they put on top of their NASes. So that's cool. We can move straight on. So we need to finish off our project and I said I was going to SSH to it. So let's try and SSH to that Ubuntu server that is running on my Ugreen NAS. Uh, yeah, I do want to actually connect with that key. That's great. Let's pop in the password for my account and we're in. Awesome. So as you can see, I'm actually, well, we're in. Would help if I could type the password, right? There we go, now we're in. So as you can see, I've SSH'd here within um, a terminal on Windows, and I've also got a VNC connection directly through the web browser, which is being fed off the NAS. So cool, multiple different ways of connecting to my Linux server. Couldn't be happier with this, to be honest. So Docker containers, let's try something easy on here as well. Let's try and get a WordPress blog up and running. Um, so I already downloaded this in the background, but if you just go to the Docker space inside the Ugreen interface, and select your images. You've got a list of default images you can go and grab. Um, but I'm just gonna pull down the latest version of the WordPress image down here, and we're going to see if we can get a Docker container version of WordPress running. So let's pop over to new container. We're gonna use that WordPress latest image, and it's giving me all the list of stuff. This appears to be a little bit like Portana, so I can put in the CPU limits and the memory limits and set all the environment variables, all the usual fun stuff you do with Docker containers. Uh, yeah, nice little interface here, actually seems like they've really thought about this. I quite like it when people add just the things I need and none of the things I actually don't. Uh, and it's not actually trying to advertise me other stuff, which is quite good, at least in this day and age when everything seems to want to advertise you things. So yeah, we've still got our networking interfaces down here. We could set up my VLAN if we want to and do network bridging, but we're just going to stick with this on a simple connection. So I'm just gonna pop this on a high level port, I think for the moment. Yeah, so I've just got a NAS port here of 43657. That's fine. That's some unused high-level port inside my network. Uh, and let's go and confirm that and start this WordPress container. So yeah, click the confirm button, confirm to create the container. Uh, we don't need any GPU capabilities. This is just a WordPress blog. And hey, that's up. Cool. So let's see if we can actually connect to that WordPress container by popping to the correct URL with the top-level port. And yeah, straight there. I mean, it's up. It's up and running. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So some final thoughts on this Ugreen NAS. I couldn't recommend it enough. It's done exactly what it's supposed to do out the box. There's been no problems at all. I haven't really had to troubleshoot anything. Very impressed. Uh, wholly recommended. And you know the routine. Hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.